If you're a cellist who's interested in exploring the Baroque style, there are many different levels and steps um, from your normal modern cello training to your fully early music, authentic, historical performance, performance practice, whatever you want to call it, authentic way of playing Baroque cello. There are a lot of ways you can change your equipment, but there are also a lot of ways you can change your playing style. It helps first to start off just understanding some of the constructional differences between the Baroque cello and the modern cello we play today. I did a video a couple years ago outlining some of the constructional differences, which I'll put a link to in the description and also in an annotation. But once you have a good idea of the constructional differences, you can start to decide what kind of the changes you might want to make to your cello or to your equipment setup. However, due to financial constraints or just wanting to try things out, it's also useful to know how to implement some of these Baroque style principles into your playing on your modern instrument. So I'll talk a little bit about how you can take your modern equipment and play more stylistically on that equipment, but I want to also just give you some starter points if you're thinking of trying some new equipment as well. I think the first place to start is your bow. The modern bows we use now, which is what I have here, have a heavier tip and a heavier frog, they're generally just a heavier bow. And we have a curve of the stick that goes towards the hair as opposed to away from the hair, which is what we have on a Baroque bow. This heavier tip aims to get a more sustained sound all the way through the bow from the frog to the tip. If we take a look at my Baroque bow, you can see right away that the tip is lighter, which gives more of a decrescendo or a taper towards the end of the bow. And the stick curves away from the hair, which gives more tension and therefore more stress and weight in the center of the bow. So we don't have a streamlined effect across the whole bow. We have quite a bit of variation. So right away, even using a modern bow, we can take into account the variation that we would have on a Baroque bow and simulate it on a modern bow. So this is my modern cello, and if I were to just draw a bow and use my good modern technique, it would sound something like this. all the way out to the tip. So if I wanted to emulate what a Baroque bow might sound like, what I'm going to do is aim for a little bit of a swell in the center of the bow and try to decrescendo as I get out to the tip. So the bow might not be ideally designed for that, but if we have a strong bow hand, we're able to add those types of details into our stroke. Another principle we see a lot in Baroque playing is the idea of strong and weak. So that's another way that we can use the bow to help us. On the Baroque bow, our up bows are gonna be a little bit lighter than our down bows because they're starting at the light tip. So because we're a little more equally distributed here, we have to do double duty to make sure that we're gonna be light on our up bows even though our bow might wanna still be strong. Modern technique stresses to make everything even and to not let any inconsistencies in our playing. But in Baroque playing, we sort of like these inconsistencies, so we're going to try to make them happen on the modern equipment. So playing in a modern style where I make everything even, my down bows and my up bows might sound like this. Pretty much even from the up and the down. So if I want to get this a little bit more stylistic sounding, I'm going to lighten my up bows. That gives us a nice shape and it also helps us emphasize some notes and de-emphasize others. A big question oftentimes in stylistic playing is vibrato. There's a misconception that vibrato is never to be used in early styles of playing and there's really no evidence that supports never, but it was definitely treated as an ornament and not as something that was constant all the time. So while we can use vibrato to emphasize a note the same way that we might use a trill or an ornament, we don't want to be smoothing everything out and putting vibrato on everything because that defeats the purpose of using it to add emphasis. Also, the notes that we choose to emphasize in Baroque music are not always the same notes that we might emphasize with a modern interpretation. Modern interpretations typically like to play big at the end of a phrase and to have a lush, loud, vibrated note as the last note. Baroque music works a lot with tension and release, and oftentimes the last note is actually a release of tension and not something to make loud. So for that reason, if we were to vibrate, we might actually want to vibrate on a penultimate note rather than the last note because the penultimate note is often the leading tone where the tension is being held. So instead of... We might do... With the 
absence of vibrato, we need to add something else that increases the intensity, and that, most of the time, is going to be the bow. As a modern player, when you feel yourself tempted to vibrate on a note, take the vibrato out and ask yourself what you can do with your bow to increase the intensity on the note. I'm going to play the opening of the Vivaldi E minor sonata, just a few notes in what I consider to be a modern style. <laughs> Now there's a couple things we can do a little more stylistically with that opening. For one, when we have a big octave leap like that, in general we don't want to make those super super connected like we would in modern playing. We want to allow there to be space when we have big intervals because that usually is similar to playing the bass line because the bass line typically jumps around to all different intervals. So just a little bit of space between those big octaves makes everything a little bit clearer and also acknowledges that we're playing different voices rather than one streamlined melody. Second, vibrato. So if I take the vibrato out, let's see how I can use the bow to increase the intensity. Because we have these four repeated notes and naturally we want to get a little bit stronger with each one. So it can be done with vibrato. It can also be done with the bow. And then we can start to add just a little bit of vibrato if we want to amp it up, but we're going to start with the bow as our place of intensity. This little excerpt also brings up a good point of trills. Trills in general are either creating or softening a dissonance, so they're not stagnant. We want to feel the push and pull of what a trill is doing. So as a Baroque cellist, I try to avoid playing trills that are really even. There's a time and place for trills like that, but not all the time. I like to usually start my trills slow and get a little bit faster as I go. So we get that appoggiatura, that we hear that trill note for a longer period before we go into the trill. And the last part of this phrase is the resolution. After the trill, there's our little freezing moment that we've worked up to. So in modern playing, we might still play that loud. But in Baroque playing, we might want to come away from that note. We've built the intensity up, and then we sort of come back on that. So already in just a couple notes of an opening, we've had a lot of different options to explore. And remember, music is music and everyone's open to their own interpretations. But these are some principles from the Baroque that we have supported in many treatises written in the 18th century and are considered to be sort of conventional, understood ideas of performance practice. Whether or not you want to do these things is ultimately up to you, but it's worth it to try to shake your modern habits, get into some new habits of understanding different principles, and then make your artistic decisions based on knowing both sides. Once you get used to some of the stylistic principles of playing Baroque music, you can start to explore the steps of going further into Baroque cello or Baroque string playing. As I mentioned, I think the first step is getting your hands on a Baroque bow. If you're a student, many music conservatories have a small collection of Baroque bows that you can borrow. When you're ready to make a purchase, though a Baroque bow is not cheap, it at least is a good first step and it'll be cheaper than buying a whole new instrument. I definitely suggest looking into renting one or borrowing one from someone. The next step after getting a bow is putting gut strings on your instrument. A set of gut strings can be fairly expensive, about on par with the price of buying a set of good modern steel strings. But getting used to gut strings is a whole different ballgame. You get a completely different timbre, a wonderful sound, a new set of challenges, but it really changes the sound world and also how you use the bow to make sound. Once you've put gut strings on your instrument and you're using a Baroque bow, you're really pretty close to being at a Baroque setup. And there are plenty of people who actually begin their Baroque careers with this setup of gut strings and a Baroque bow on a modern instrument. As a cellist, you can experiment with just taking your end pin out 
out and learning how to hold the cello without the end pin. Once you've spent some time on that setup, then you can begin to look on getting a second instrument and having it fully set up as a Baroque instrument, which means changing the bridge, uh, getting rid of your fine tuners and getting used to tuning with the pegs. Um, changing the bass bar or the sound post inside the instrument, and even the angle of the neck and the fingerboard. Even though it seems like a big commitment, there's so much you can learn about the style with the equipment you already have, and there are many small intermediate steps you can take before fully taking the plunge into Baroque style. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to leave your questions in the comments. If you like these videos, you can subscribe to my channel as I do new videos weekly, and if you want to help support me make more videos, you can become my patron on Patreon.